In this video, we'll restore the main board in this classic Commodore 64 computer. We'll replace any bad capacitors and repair any problems we find in testing. The capacitors in this thing are an odd brand I've never heard of before. Grand Sonic. This gives me little confidence in them, so they'll probably all get replaced, but I still want to test them and see how they compare to some new Nichicons I have on hand. Finally, we'll run some tests, make sure everything's okay, and if it's not, we'll fix that too. Let's get started. I did find that posting a video where you say one of the problems with your case is not the back tabs is the perfect way to then immediately break one of the back tabs. And so we'll take out the main board so that uh, we can get this all fixed up. As I said in the last video, this one piece did break loose. That's the one I forgot to sand. That E6000 stuck really well, except for where the plastic wasn't uh, wasn't sanded. All right, there's the main board. First thing we're going to have to do is unsolder all of these tabs for the RF shield on the bottom. And that's going to be a fun little job. You do know by fun, I mean it's going to suck, right? You know, I read some reviews about these wellers saying that they didn't uh, hold heat well and that the temperature dropped on heavy ground planes and the like. And I can say that I am definitely not experiencing that here. This is definitely a big and heavy ground plane and I'm watching the temperature and it's dropping maybe uh, five to seven degrees and then recovering. So it's certainly not a problem. Once I get this board nice and cleaned up, I'm going to be pulling these caps off. I'm going to test them, but even if they test good, I'm going to replace these because I've read a few things online about Grand Sonics failing shorted. So uh, since this is going to be my main squeeze as far as Commodore 64s go, I want to get that crud off of there. So I will pull those off test them just to compare what they look like compared to the new caps. The new caps I have to go in here are Nichicons. So looking at this board, I see signs of flux and stuff on most of the heavier solder joints, the video and serial connectors, and more significantly, one of the uh, CIA chips. But no bodge wires, only Corrosion I see is a little bit around the uh, connectors for the uh, RF modulator. Surprisingly, I don't see any sign of rework on any of the RAM chips, which I would expect to have had some while this has been uh, around for a while. The next step, I'm going to clean up this board. You can see it's pretty dusty. I don't know how well it shows up on video, but it's pretty uh, pretty grimy here. So I am going to remove the shields from the VIC. And from the RF modulator, which is always so tight. I gave it a bit of a bath. Just uh, wash it off a little bit. And I wanna make sure I don't have any water in the tight spots. So I'm just gonna blow it out with a bit of canned air. I'm gonna spray a little alcohol in there. I'm gonna scrub it with some alcohol and a brush. And a couple of conductive brushes. I got this bigger one that I just used to actually read the number on the uh, VIC. It's an R8. Alright, I'm going to heat up the soldering iron. I'm going to pull this cap off. I'm going to use this inexpensive little uh, kit tester I got to uh, test them. 0.05 ohm ESR, 
VLOS 0.9%, 2046 microfarads. And this is a 2200 microfarad cap, plus or minus 20%, so that's well within spec, and that's a brand new Nichicon, so should be a good cap. Now I am gonna pull the cap off the board that's the same rating, and see what we get. And I should have done this to start with. When you're dealing with really old solder, sometimes it's just a pain in the neck to deal with. So just heating it up, adding a little bit of new solder to it, get a little bit of flux in there. It's a lot easier to remove. Okay, after getting the cap off the board, we need to test it and see how it compares to the new Nichicon. 2,823 microfarads is well out of spec. Uh, 20% over 2200 would be 2620 if I'm doing math in my head right. So that cap is officially bad. I almost put this cap in backwards. The silk screen on the board looks like negative. And since all the other caps are marked on the positive side, I double checked and sure enough, it's just a bad or worn silk screen. Now we just need to replace all the electrolytics on this board. How about a montage? I found an interesting study from the University of Sheffield on electrolytic capacitor aging. I'll put a link in the description below, but the TLDR was that as a capacitor ages and the electrolyte dries, the ESR will increase regardless of whether the cap is used or just stored. The increase in capacitance that is also seen in aging is reduced when the capacitor is in use because an aluminum oxide layer on the anode of the capacitor is able to be reinforced by the current when it's in use. Interestingly, this implies that a new old stock cap may be worse than one that's been in use. The study also verified that the Arrhenius rule that each 10 degree increase in operating temperature will have the life of a capacitor is in fact reasonably accurate. While this Commodore 64 was working, it should now be more reliable with the failed capacitors replaced. I had said in the last video that I would also be doing the RF modulator mod this week, but I wanted to have more than just a tech screen for before and after comparisons. My 1541 ROM order is lost in transit, so I'll have to wait to do the mod until I can get the 1541 working, or until the Easy Flash 3 I have ordered arrives. I hope you liked this video. If you'd like to see more like it, click the Raven Wolf logo to subscribe, and here's another video you might like.